So this is my trusty Issue 3 Spectrum 48K. This is the very first Speccy that I purchased as a project to repair, restore and upgrade back during lockdown of 2020. I documented the repair, restoration and upgrade process quite heavily on my Instagram feed and the link is below if you're interested, but as you can see quite a bit of work has been completed. The lower RAM was replaced as this was all faulty, the electrolytic caps have been replaced, the 5 watt regulator has also been changed to a smart switching regulator and the video output was updated to S-Video as well. I also tried some preventative modifications by adding a heatsink to the OLA and the Z80 CPU. So today's job is to change the video output once again. I'm making this 40 year old computer spit out RGB signals so I can plug this into a SCART cable or even better an adapter box to allow this to be plugged into a HDMI TV. I bought a VLA82S kit that allows this work to be done. The kit is made up of a new modulator board and a replacement ULA. Now usually I could just lift the ULA out of this socket and focus on the modulator installation but because my ULA has a heatsink I soldered the ULA directly to the board to allow it all to fit. So my very first job is to carefully remove the ULA from the PCB. If the Z80 is the brains of the Spectrum, then the ULA is the heart and soul of the machine. And I want to preserve this one as much as possible. So I'll remove the chip with my solder sucker and some patience. It also gives me a chance to try out my new flux paste. Once all the pins have been desoldered, it's a really good practice just to wiggle each pin to make sure that they are really free. If you try to force a chip out with a little bit of solder still attached, there's a chance that you can break a pad or strip out a plated through hole. The ULA is out and I'm going to keep this one safe, ready for the next one that needs a new heart transplant. The 40 pin socket goes in and I'm using the flat pin cheaper style socket here, not the turn pin style, as the instructions for the VLA do mention a turn pin socket won't quite allow the VLA to sit and make a good contact. With all the pins soldered in, it's time to remove the S-Video board. Now I covered the installation of this on another Spectrum. I also showed how to remove the RF CAN too. The link is in the corner if you're interested. I've desoldered the two wires and of course I forgot one. The S-Video board is held in with two screws that are locked in place. And once it's removed, I desolder the last wire and again I'll put this to a side ready for another Spectrum in the future. Now that the board is cooled, I give it a quick clean with some IPA and I start the installation. So I'm going to start with the modulator board. I'll remove the cable from this end to help with the fitting and you'll notice that on the bottom of the board there has a gasket and that allows this board to fit flat against the PCB and not short out. Two pins are pushed to the other side of the PCB and soldered where the old RF can once sat. Now it would have been nice if these pins were slightly larger to replicate the size of the RF can, but adding more solder fixes that issue quite quickly. Before we finish up, just make sure you're happy with the alignment and that you're happy in its final position. Next up is the VLA. I've added the cable to the connection on the underside of the chip and plugged it into the modulator board as well. Now it's just a case of pushing the chip into the IC holder. Do this as flat as you can with equal pressure along the length of the IC. Don't press in the center as this IC has some delicate SMD components. Right, now I'm ready to test. So adding an 8 pin mini DIN to SCART cable, this one in fact comes from my Harlequin 128. And I'll also add some power, and it's time to see if this thing will work. I'll add a diagnostic cart to begin with, and see if it fires up. Well, it passed the first test, no smoke. And as you can see, the diagnostics cart is lit up with some fantastic LEDs. And if we look at the screen, I'm sorry it's a bad shot, but I think you can see that there's no dancing ants, and there's no fuzzy lines. The RGB output is pin sharp, and if I zoom into the lettering on screen, you can see how clean it is up close. So it's time to button it back up and test it the only way I know how.
On my homemade tape Duino, I find Attic Attack and load it from the tape socket. And this proves that the ULA is working fine. I can hear the audio coming through the socket. And there we go, a great upgrade that provides RGP output. The kit also comes with an added benefit too. You can get audio on the TV from a 48K Spectrum. Small jumpers on the modulator board allow you to configure the audio output, and this won't work on this cable as my audio lines are cut and fed to a 3.5mm jack. But once I make up the new cable, I can hear in glorious high definition audio the horrific Manic Miner theme. And that's one that I know the family are going to really look forward to. So I've put a link to this kit in the video description. This video isn't sponsored or endorsed by its creator, and frankly, they probably don't even know I exist. So that's it for now. Take care, many thanks, bye bye.